For centuries, the Deepwater Harbor at the mouth of the Thames River was the most important center of shipping and commerce in Connecticut. During the American Revolution, the region sheltered Patriot forces that harassed British supply lines to occupy New York. In the summer of 1781, George Washington's troops were headed for the final showdown in Yorktown. British generals ordered trader Benedict Arnold to raid New London and destroy the rebel fleet. It would be the bloodiest battle on Connecticut soil. Fort Griswold Battlefield State Park is Connecticut's most important battlefield, a scenic and historic treasure comprised of a Revolutionary War era fort, a 135-foot high granite monument, two history museums, and one of the most breathtaking views in southern New England. It was September 6, 1781, Norwich, Connecticut native turned British officer Benedict Arnold led a remorseless assault against his homeland. The British launched a full-scale land invasion to stop the Patriots' hit-and-run attacks on their supply lines. Imagine the horror at dawn as Rufus Avery sounded the alarm that an invasionary force from 32 British naval vessels was disembarking offshore. New London was evacuated as Arnold led an 800-man detachment which stormed the town, detonating a storehouse of gunpowder and setting a fire that destroyed 143 buildings. On the other side of the river lay Fort Griswold, a star-shaped fort with stone and earthen walls and pointed bastions surrounding parade grounds and barracks for 300 men. A diorama of the Battle of Groton Heights in the Monument House Museum represents the 800 British troops under Lieutenant Colonel Eyre who stormed up the hill to take Fort Griswold with its 165 defenders. Though badly outnumbered, American Colonel William Ledyard refused to surrender. British casualties were high, including Major William Montgomery, who was impaled by African-American defender Jordan Freeman. After the 40-minute battle, British soldiers took control of the fort and then killed or wounded most of the surrendering Patriot troops, including Colonel Ledyard, who was run through the chest with the sword he had just surrendered. Designed by Ithiel Town in 1826, the Groton Monument was dedicated in 1830. This is one of the first Revolutionary War monuments in America. In 1881, the top was enclosed, which increased the height of the monument to 135 feet. Also on the grounds is the Monument House Museum, which was inspired by the success of a loan exhibition during the Battle Centennial in 1881. The Daughters of the American Revolution created the museum when they expanded the caretaker's quarters in 1894. It's a good old-fashioned museum lined wall-to-wall -wall with storybook artifacts related to the battle and locality. One of the celebrated personalities here was Anna Warner Bailey, who tended to the needs of dying soldiers in 1781 and then later famously tore off and donated her petticoat to use as cannon wadding during the War of 1812. Her bravery and disdain for the invaders earned her a national reputation. Here you will also find a red cloak belonging to Rufus Avery, who sounded the alarm at the invasion, and a hat worn by Joseph Moxley, who died defending the fort. Furniture, ceramics, firearms, and a Revolutionary War era cannon retrieved from the Thames River make for an eclectic mix. The Monument House Museum and the Anna Warner Bailey chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution owe their existence to the leadership of Abby Day Slocum, a tireless heritage crusader who lobbied the government for permission to use the fort and facilities for the general public. To improve the ceremonial effect, Abby and her DAR chapter members wanted to fly a state flag, but in 1895 discovered that Connecticut had no official flag. So they designed one, lobbied the General Assembly for its adoption, and flew it with the national colors over the fort and museum when it was finally approved. The original artwork for our state flag is displayed here. A short distance from the fort is the Ebenezer Avery House Museum which was dismantled and rebuilt on this site in 1971. After the battle, the house was used as an emergency hospital. 
For years, blood stains could be seen on the floorboards. In the parlor, the table the family dined at the morning of the battle is also displayed. No family suffered greater casualties during the Battle of Groton Heights. Of the 165 Patriots who fought, 16 were Avery's, nine who were killed, including Lieutenant Ebenezer Avery, whose dress sword is displayed in the parlor, three wounded, including Ebenezer Avery, who owned this house, and three were taken prisoner. A short distance from Fort Griswold is the Colonel Ledyard Cemetery, where soldiers who died that day are buried, and where in 1854 the state of Connecticut commissioned a memorial to Colonel Ledyard, describing the events of September 6, 1781. The burning of New London, the storming of Groton Fort, the massacre of the garrison, and the slaughter of Ledyard, who was slain by the conquerors with his own sword. He fell in the service of his country, fearless of death, and prepared to die. Historic, dramatic, and inspirational, Groton Heights is Connecticut's most compelling connection to the American Revolution. There is no better location to reflect on the sacrifices made to secure America's freedom.